Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for coming out. Uh, my name is Brett McGowan. I am a developer advocate at Google for the Google Cloud platform. Uh, you can reach me here on Twitter at, at @brettmcg, and I work in the Google uh, New York City office. But I have to say, even though I live in New York City, I'm from Texas. Much better. All right. Howdy. Welcome. How do you know if someone's from Texas? They will tell you. Don't worry. So hello. All right, so today we're going to talk about Firebase uh, and some of the new things that have come out in the last few months. So Firebase uh, is a, a cross-platform SDK over iOS, Android, and the web that help you grow your application, um, grow your user base, and earn money. Is anyone using Firebase or has played with it? Okay, quite a few. So, uh, so there's a few things that started out as sort of the core features of Firebase, um, and then some things have been added, so we'll get into that. So uh, like I said, there's kind of three categories of what Firebase can do. One is to help you develop your application. So there's a few things here. One is the real-time database. And this is Firebase's sort of first killer feature. So this is a database, a NoSQL uh, JSON database, that allows you to do real-time synchronization really, really easily without having to manage any server-side code or any servers at all. The, uh, the second thing is Firebase authentication. So this lets you easily authenticate your, your users either with things like GitHub, Twitter, Google, Facebook, uh, your own custom um, authentication system that maybe you have, username and password, anonymous, it's a whole wide range, and Firebase makes it really, really easy. We'll take a look at that as well. Uh, Firebase hosting, uh, Firebase storage for, for storing binary data for your application, Cloud messaging for sending notifications uh, to your web uh, application or notifications, native notifications to your native apps. Um, and then some of the other things, so those are the main ones for web, which is what we'll talk about today. There's a few others for native mobile apps. So there's, uh, there's the test lab, which is uh, a service that lets you test your Android application on hundreds of virtual and physical Android devices. Crash reporting, uh, which lets you monitor and resolve um, application not responding errors and things like that. The second thing that Firebase helps you with is to grow your user base. So once you have your application built, uh, how do you grow your user base? Um, and these are mostly mobile focused, so I'm just going to mention them and then uh, we'll, we'll move on. Uh, dynamic links, so this lets you actually deep link into your Android app uh, and even all the way through application install. So you could actually have someone start um, and, and an interim or in a middle screen of your application rather than just being dumped on the first page. And this goes hand in hand with the next thing, which is invites. Uh, and so invites would be something where I could invite my friend to join me in a game. And if they don't have the uh, app installed, they can install it, and it'll persist that dynamic link through that so that the first screen that they see after install is the game where they're playing me. So that's pretty cool. And Firebase makes that easy. AdWords, which is to promote um, via AdWords to have users see, see ads to come and install your application or to download it. Uh, notifications, which is just native notifications in your application. And then app indexing, which is uh, search results that lead to your, uh, to your native app. Um, and then Earn, uh, AdMob is an SDK that, uh, and a service that lets you generate money uh, and revenue in your application by showing display ads and native ads, banner ads, a whole, kind of, uh, a whole slew of different options for earning money with your, uh, with your application. And at the center of all this is Firebase Analytics. So it's collecting data on all these different features. Uh, so you can monitor, you can do reporting on it, you can improve your application experience. So that is kind of the whole suite uh, of Firebase things. They are integrated. They work really well together. But you don't have to use all of them. You can kind of pick and choose what works for you for your application, um, for, be it web, mobile, or iOS. Um, you can use just one, or you can use all of them, and they can work well together. But that's a whole lot. So today, we're going to focus uh, on these four. So Firebase database, the real-time database, Firebase auth, storage, and cloud messaging. And these are the ones that are most relevant for a web uh, web application and a web audience. So the first one, Firebase database, if you've used Firebase before, which quite a lot of you have, um, you're familiar with this, right? So this is 
the ability to synchronize changes across uh, multiple clients within milliseconds. They can get updates. So you just write to the JSON database, and all of your uh, subscribing web apps or Android apps or iOS apps will get updated. Um, yeah, so it is NoSQL. It's hosted, so you don't manage any infrastructure at all. It's everything that you write is in your app, be it web or mobile. Um, it handles syn synchronization and conflict resolution for you. And again, you write all of that code in your native app. And I'm going to do a live coding session here in a second just to kind of set up uh, what this does for you. And one of the things it does that's pretty cool is offline support. So if you're in a native app, it actually persists uh, across like application restarts. In a web, in a web context, if you lose con connectivity uh, in your web app, uh, Firebase will actually keep running. And then once your app comes back online, or once your device gets restores connectivity to the internet, it will re-synchronize the changes um, that you've written or you've created in the int interim. So it's really nice it handles that for you. Uh, and so yeah, so once you come back online, it'll sync those changes uh, bi-directionally, things that have updated and things that you've updated uh, up into the cloud. So let's get started showing the real-time database. Um, whoops. All right, so I've got an HTML page here. It has no JavaScript in it. Just to point out a couple of things. So it's got a header uh, and then a div where we're going to put some messages, and it's including the Firebase. SDK. So this is what it looks like. So there is a utility, uh, Firebase Tools, NPM module, that gives you some command line functionality. So I can say Firebase serve dash P, give it a port. So let's say 5003. And so it starts a local web server. So now let's go to this URL. And I can show you my beautiful, gorgeous app that has been created. And it's so functional. It does so many things. All right. So it doesn't do anything. So let's make it do something. I'm going to put it here, and then Firebase database here. So this is what I would like to do. Uh, I wanted to synchronize in real time with Firebase with the Firebase database. So so here's my database over here. Uh, there's nothing in it, just null. So I'm going to create a child node called title, and I wanted to say howdy DevOps. So what I want is this title of the page to synchronize with that value. So let's do that. So I have a file here, app.js, uh, which right now has nothing. So first, we need to connect to Firebase. And we can do that pretty easily if I go to my database. Uh, and I can just click Add Firebase to your web app. And it's actually going to pre-populate this configuration with my actual product um, and project settings. So I'm going to copy all of oops, copy all of this. Be sure you write down my API I key so you can hijack my application later. All right, and I'll paste it here. So that gets us connected to Firebase. So now let's, whoa, did I lose, did I lose my screen? All right, we're back. Uh, so now I want to listen to Firebase database. So to do that, I will say const, so dbref equals Firebase dot database.ref. So this is going to point to the root of my database. So to go back to the database, if you think of it like a tree, so this is the root, this Brett Google node, and title is the child node. And that's actually what I want to listen to. So I will say const title ref, oops, ref equals dbref.child title. Now, Firebase gives you a bunch of uh, listeners you can, um, events you can listen to for when things change. And one of them is value. So I will say title ref dot on value and then snapshot. So what value does is anytime that value changes from anyone, this will get called. So the first thing I want to do is update that uh, page title. Let me find it here. So where is Firebase demo? OK. So page title. So this is what I want to update. So I'm going to copy the ID, page title. And I'm going to say that element dot inner text equals snapshot dot val. Uh, so snapshot has some sort of metadata about that record, like a key and things like that. Val is the actual value. So in this case, that's uh, howdy devox. So let me refresh my page here. 
And yes, error. What am I missing? <laughs> Live debugging. All right. Uh, I included this, right? And title, title ref, cons. All right, here we go. Console.log. My old friend, hello. Let's do it. Nothing. Oh, here we go. Howdy, DevOps. Huh, maybe I didn't refresh hard enough. So we'll notice if I say howdy DevOps, and I'm just, so this is the Firebase database on the left. I will add a smiley face here. As Soon as I hit enter, almost immediately it shows up in my application. And that's cool, because it's doing it locally on my machine, but actually anyone who was on this page, if I deployed it out on the web, would instantly get that update, uh, which is doing a lot behind the scenes, right? And you notice I, I wrote 100% of the code required to do this. So let's add just a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to add a chat functionality. If you've ever seen a Firebase demo before, you're required by law to do a chat demo. So let me uncomment this. So I have these elements here. I've got a text input for the name of the person and a text input for the message and a send button. So just to show you what that looks like. So this is the uh, name and this is the message. And I'll hit send. So it doesn't do anything right now, so let's wire it up. I will take input name. All right. So uh, we talked about value as, a, uh, as an event that Firebase gives you. There's also something called child added. So um, actually, let me back up. Let's write it to the database first. So we're going to take the send button. And on send button .add event listener, And on click, we're going to give it a function. So whenever you click that button, uh, let's say let message equal, so name, and that's where we'll say, what do I call it, input name, and message, input message. So these are just the, oops, dot value, dot value. So it's getting the values that are in those text boxes, and it's creating a JSON object called uh, message. So here I could do console.log msg. Oh, let me get rid of my beautiful hello. Um, all right, so when I click this button, I'm going to create a JSON object called message. Now how do I write it to database? Super easy. Um, I'm going to make another reference here, const chat ref equals dbref dot child chat. So this is anything that is, uh, this is all going to go under the chat node, under the root node. So chat ref dot push message. Uh, and push is a Firebase method that automatically adds to a list. So let's see what that looks like. Let me refresh. Just to make sure it refreshes. So Brett, can we make it a little bit bigger? So I'm going to say hi there, hit send. And you'll see under chat, it created this thing with like a wacky ID. I expand it, uh, and that is the message that I had. And this is a, a, an ID that Firebase generates automatically, just to make sure all your messages um, are in chronological order um, without, being, uh, without having to worry about conflicts like one, two, three, so if two people send at the same time. So that's how we get it in. So how do we read it out? So we're going to do something similar to value, but on chat ref on, uh, and this time the event is child added. So that is the event, oops, snapshot. So child added is going to fire any time a new one of these comes in, you'll get a reference to that new element. So we're going to get a reference to uh, the messages div here. That's where we're going to output it. So, oops, document.get element by ID messages. So let message element equal that. Um, and then we'll say, oops. And then let, um, so this is our new element equals document dot create element. Let's create a div. And then element dot enter or dot enter text equals um, snapshot dot val dot name dash snapshot dot val dot message. All right, so hopefully, if we come back here and refresh, 
All right, killing it right now. Why am I not? What? Oh, yeah, it would help if I actually added it. Yeah, there we go. Message element dot prepend element. Thank you. Crowdsource debugging, appreciate it. There we go. So hi there. So now I do it again. Nope, not Brett. Bert. Brett. Howdy. So I hit send. And you can see it adds it to the list and also adds it over here in my Firebase database. All right, so that's cool. Um, that is real-time database. It shows you how, I, well, actually, I guess I can show you in two windows in case you don't believe me. So I'll pull up a second one, and this will be Brett 2 I'm in another window. Hit send, and you can see it shows up there. So pretty easy. That's all the code we had to write uh, to get a real-time chat application going. So the next thing we'll look at uh, is, well, OK, so I should also mention, um, so I wrote a lot of that UI code manually. There are plugins for Ember.js, React, uh, Polymer that will do a lot of that, what we call three-way binding for you, like binding to the database, um, to the UI, and then have the, capture the user input. So it makes it really, really easy. If you use any of these frameworks in your web app, uh, Firebase supports these really, really nicely. So the next thing we'll look at is Firebase storage. So this is one of the new things that we announced at Google I.O. this year, 2016. This is taking your users' binary files and putting it in our cloud. And this is backed by Google Cloud Platform uh, cloud storage, which means it can scale up to petabytes. Um, it is distributed. It is extremely powerful. Um, and it also has security rules. It, everything happens over SSL. And with those security rules, you can, you can write rules that only certain users can access certain files, uh, and so on and so forth. So security is very important. I'm not going to get into security rules in this talk, but just know there's this kind of expressive language um, that you can control access. So let us add storage. So it was kind of painful to watch me live code through two bugs. Um, so let's go to some pre-cooked code that I have here. I'm going to say, so file upload. So I want the ability for users to upload files in their chat. Um, so here is what I have. So let me uncomment some things and then talk through it. So first, we are going to get uh, the HTML element clue file upload. So that is just, where is it? Am I have I uncommented? Um, so clue file upload is just a, a, a file input. And then next to it, I have an image called clue image. So the reason I call it clue um, is originally I envisioned this as a game where like, you could upload a, an image or a famous landmark, and people could guess in the chat what, it, what is this a landmark of, right? So you upload some kind of cathedral image, the first person to guess what it is wins points. So I didn't get into all that game logic. It was too much for this demo. But you can imagine that's where, where you might go with this application. So first thing you'll do is get a reference at HTML element, add an event listener to change. So this is when they actually click File Upload, uh, and then they select a file. So then you get a reference to the file itself, so e.target.files, uh, which is just the HTML way of doing that. And then here is the Firebase part. So instead of Firebase.database, we do Firebase.storage. But also, like database, you can a ref. And this can be anything you want. So I just arbitrarily picked images slash, and then file.name is what the browser reported as the file I uploaded. And then I get a reference here, much like I do in chat. So let me uncomment that. Um, so then there's this put method, so storage ref.put. You give it the file, and then it returns a promise. Uh, when, and when that finishes, you get a snapshot. And so the snapshot means your file has successfully uploaded. Oh, one thing I should mention about uh, Firebase storage that I, that I forgot, uh, it also supports um, you're talking about offline support with chat. Like if you go offline and you come back online, it'll resync your changes. With, fire, with file uploads, it has the ability to do the same thing with file uploads. So if you go offline or you lose connectivity or something happens, when you reconnect, it can resume uploading your files, which is really great if you need to upload files of any sort of significant size. Uh, it makes it really, really easy for you. So once we get returned our snapshot, we can call storage ref .get download URL. So that's if we want to make it publicly available. So in this case, we want to put it in an image source tag. So this returns exactly what we want. Uh, so once that finishes, we get a URL here. And I'm going to update uh, elsewhere in the database. Um, now instead of the, so this is the root node. Now I'm going to have it another node called clue. And I'm going to set that to the image URL. So now once we do that, 
we need to listen for when that this URL gets updated. So the person uploading it is going to trigger this event. Everyone will then hear about this image that got uploaded through this event, because we're going to set that URL in the database, and just Firebase will automatically sync those changes for us. So this is going back to firebase.database. Under the root node, we have a clue node. Um, <clears throat> whenever that value changes, we're going to get the clue image, which is the image tag in HTML, and set the source to snapshot.val. So let's take a look at that. All right, so I've got this choose file. You can see the broken image there. I was too lazy to actually hide it and show it, but that's where my uploaded image will show up here in a second. So if I click choose file, and let's pick, wait, I want to do this one, basin. Oh, whoops. Let's try that again. Yeah, there it was. It just took, I was impatient. Um, so what it did over here on the left is it updated this clue URL with clue property with the URL of that image, which we just set in our image tag. Um, so that's all it is. I can browse to storage, and I'll see under her images, uh, and those are the two images that I just uploaded. And again, this is backed by Google Cloud uh, Platform Storage, so I could actually go into my Google Cloud project. Well, you believe me, we don't, we're running short on time, but um, I could actually browse in my Google Cloud project uh, and see those same files. Um, and if you do something like Cloud Functions, you can actually have another function that runs in the background automatically when a, uh, when a file gets uploaded. So um, the next thing we're going to look at is Firebase Cloud Messaging. So this is a free, this is a no-cost way of doing uh, notifications. And you can, all, on top of this, you can do Firebase notifications, which goes to native apps, and that's an actual like, native you know, drop-down from the top kind of notification. Um, but it also works uh, on web using cloud messaging to get uh, offline messages. So if the user is in your app, um, you know, there's a lot of ways you can communicate with the app while that's happening. But if they close your page or they minimize it, they go to another window, uh, your options become a lot, become a lot um, more restricted. So Cloud's messaging will actually let you send those events to a service worker that's running in the background uh, to take those messages and do something with it. And, and let's take a look at that. So again, I'm, I kind of have a pre-baked file here. We're going to call it messaging. And let's open that up. Messaging. All right. So again, similar to Firebase.database or Firebase.storage, we have Firebase.messaging. Um, and it does a couple of things here. So the first thing it's going to do is request permission to send notifications to the page. And you've probably seen this, uh, right, if you're using uh, Chrome or your browser, and it's like such and such web page would like access to your location, or such and such web page would like to send you notifications, and you can either accept or decline. So all you have to do is call messaging.request permission. If they agree, then the then will fire, and we know we have permission. Uh, if they decline, then it will uh, throw an error, and you can see that here in the catch, and you can explain to the user, like, you know, your functionality will be limited, uh, or maybe just, just don't do anything. So it also remembers, like the browser remembers if you gave it permission. So if you come back to the same page, uh, they won't get prompted again, but this will fire. So what we're going to do here is we're going to return messaging.getToken, um, and then, which goes to this next step in the chain, and we're just going to log it to the console. So normally the way, that, the way that this would work is instead of logging to the console, your app would actually report it your web app would report it to your server. Like if you've got some kind of messaging server or something, so that when you need to message all the users of your application, you, they've all reported their tokens to you. So you can basically say, send a message to this set of tokens, uh, send a notification to this set of tokens, and it'll do that. We, I don't have like a backend set up, it's too much to get into. So we're just gonna, we're going to do it super manually. So I'm just gonna write the token to the console and then I'll copy it and then uh, do a curl request, which I'll show you in a second, to actually tell Firebase Cloud Messaging to send that. Um, so we've got another thing here that I wanna point out. So by default, it would actually show the notification while you're in your, while they are on your web page, which is kind of annoying, right? If they're using your app, you don't want like these floating windows popping up. You only want that to happen uh, when they're out of your app. So right here, we can say, okay, when this comes in and they are in the app, fire this, uh, which in this case, we're just going to log it to the console. But you probably would want to show them something in the UI in your app, but you would want to do it within the context of your web app. 
Um, but now what happens if a message comes in when, you're, when your page is closed? So for that, we need a service worker. So I have pre-canned this uh, service worker. So this runs independently, so we have to actually reconnect to Firebase. And it's just using the same settings we were using initially. I'm going to import Firebase app and Firebase messaging, uh, and then get this reference to Firebase messaging. Uh, down here is if you want to write a custom alert. We're going to skip that for now. So let's go back here and refresh. And so you see right away it says uh, localhost 5003 wants to show notifications. So I'll say allow. And down here, if you can read it, it says have permission. And then it has the token. So let me copy this token. Notific. Uh oh. Sent. <laughs> Please hold. What did I call this thing? Oh, uh, it's in a different directory. One minute. Got to go up a level. All right, so I'll just expand so you can see what I'm looking at. So this is a curl request with a JSON body to tell the Firebase. So this key is going to identify my application. Um, this is the JSON that you want to send. And it can, it's, it can be anything, essentially. If you use title body icon by default, um, Chrome knows how to interpret that. And the two is going to be that token. So let me copy this and then run it. So the, oops. Come on. Oh, that didn't work at all. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. All right, let's try this. All right, so success one. So what that just did uh, is that sent a request to the Firebase messaging server to send out notification to your app. And oh no. Firebase icon. Oh, I think I need to. Uh, it's it can't find that um, this Firebase icon because it's called something different. It's called Firebase logo. Of course it is. Firebase icon. Let's change this to Firebase logo. All right. And I'll paste that. All right, and success. And so now, so you can see up here, hello world. So you didn't see it in the other screen because my terminal, my editor was full screen, um, and the OS won't show it. But this hello world, um, so let's actually close this page. So you believe me, and I'll send another one. So I'll close this. So they are now out of your web app. So if I send this and then go back over, there's another, or another notification. So that's pretty cool. Um, and if you do it in a service worker, you can actually inspect a JSON. So if you need to update some kind of internal state, or you want to like show a notification depending on what data came in, uh, that's where this set background message handler uh, will come into play. So I'm just using the default, which just shows the, uh, the icon and the title and the body um, that I had specified. So that is Firebase Cloud Messaging. So we're getting short on time, so I'll just kind of talk through authentication. Um, so this also has existed uh, for a while in Firebase. Uh, in, at I.O., though, we, we announced basically pre-canned UI. So without having to do much, uh, you can actually get an, either an in-flow uh, authentication and login with uh, GitHub, Twitter, Google, um, custom email and pad password, your custom authentication. You can kind of get it in-flow where it goes to another page and then comes back, or it pops up um, to some UI. So that's pretty cool. And yeah, these are the different methods of the port, GitHub, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Google, and so on. Um, Firebase hosting, which I'll show you because it just takes one command, is just Firebase, let's see, where am I? Firebase deploy. And this will actually push this out on the public internet with your st static assets. Uh, it automatically creates an SSL cert, and it also creates a fully qualified domain um, your static assets are backed by a global CDN, uh, so your assets uh, will be distributed um, and highly performant. So you can see I go to brett-google.firebaseapp.com, and uh, I'm able to get access to my application. So Firebase init and Firebase deploy. All right, so we didn't cover security rules. Uh, it's definitely something to think about, both in a 
database sense, uh, where you need, to, you need to have certain nodes of your JSON tree that you can read and some that you can't. So for example, a user needs to be able to edit their own stuff, but not someone else's. Uh, and there's also security rules for files, for storage. So you can say only upload files of a certain type or of a certain size. And that is pretty much it. So we are out of time, and thank you.